Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I'm joined by my esteemed co-hosts as ever, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. And today we are interviewing Paco of Run With Bitcoin, who is a recent Bitcoiner and is traveling India and the world on only Bitcoin and, well, running with Bitcoin. Uh, and also joined by Mriddle, who is our India ambassador at BitRefill, who is hanging out with Paco right now in Delhi. So uh, <laughs> it's a pretty, uh, pretty unique, complete surprise on us as well, which is awesome. So uh, glad to have everyone here. So there's, uh, we're going strong today. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I wanted to yeah, kick off the interview, I suppose, the podcast, uh, by just asking you a pretty simple question here, Paco, and it's one that we've spoken about uh, in person. How did your journey begin? Wow. Hi, namaste to everyone. Uh, you're good? You're good? <laughs> All right, namaste to everyone. My name is Paco. I'm from India. And my journey pretty much began with the book called The Bitcoin Standard. And that's where the things just got kicking. Saifuddin Amos really got me thinking about what's happening with our world. And I read that book in about four days. And I understood like, holy Jesus, what's happening? What's sound money? What's time preference? What's creating value? And it was crazy, man. Like I, I was like, how can this be going forward? And then in the book, it was written by Nellie Bly. There was a, a British lady who traveled around the world in 1878 by just using pounds and gold coins. And I was like, wait a minute, this is 2021. I can travel around the world by just using Bitcoin. I'm like, let's pick it forward. And that's how the journey started. And today is day number 56 of this journey. That's awesome, man. It's like you got orange pilled by uh, the Bitcoin standard. That's, uh, it's not uncommon, but it's not super common either, I suppose. It's a good book for exactly that. One of those books that I read after I got into Bitcoin, but it kind of just strengthened some of my thoughts, I suppose. Uh, it's full of interesting yeah. facts as well. Because like, you, were, you were traveling around uh, before... You discovered Bitcoin and you've had a YouTube channel for a little while where you were traveling around and making videos of it and making vlogs and making different content. So when did you begin your life of actually, you know, journeying to new places and, and traveling? Oh, wow. My traveling journey started way back in 2013. I remember I started with couch surfing and I was receiving a lot of travelers in my house and I'm an Indian and we do not have a concept of sabbatical. It's all about just study, work, work, work and work. And they were just traveling six months, one year, two years. And I was like, wait a minute, let's just take a sabbatical. So I saved up about $5,000, $8,000. And I was like, let's just go about traveling the world. And that was supposed to be a six month holiday, but that turned out to be say four years on the road, 1200 days. I know my money ran out. But I just went about traveling to 23 different countries and running in every city. That's my project called Run Every City. So I ran in about 250 cities and came back after my travels. I've been, I've done the entire Americas hitchhiking. So you can say from USA all the way down to Chile. And really met all of amazing people. Couch surfed with over 400 different families. That's where my community belief is really strong. I really believe that the community comes together always. And yeah, and pretty much that's my journey. And then I came back to India, did a little bit of jobs here and there. It didn't work out. And then my friend just gifted me a GoPro. And he's like, how about you just go about traveling and vlogging your journey? And I just started vlogging and COVID hit. And a year later, I was gifted the book, the Bitcoin Standard. And I was like, let's just start it away right away. So September 17 started my journey. And yeah, really grateful. To the amazing people I've met. Oh my God. It's just like, I feel it's a trip. I'm on a high. <laughs> What's your favorite place been that you've traveled to? Hey, Parcero, obviously it's Colombia. Colombia has just so much. Colombia was the place where I was teaching English in Cali. So I had about three months of teaching. And after that, four months were teachers were on strike. Thank you to Ministerio de Educación. And I just got to travel this beautiful country. You got the deserts, you got the mountains, you got the best coffee. You got the best beaches and you got the best beautiful woman in the world and you got the best arepa arepa is the best thing i love you guys i think so colombia what has been painted i remember this i came back to india after my travels and everybody was like oh my god you were in colombia you were in cali oh my god was it so dangerous for you and i'm like guys that's 90s things have changed people are really beautiful just think about it and even and people didn't believe me but then i was like colombia is the best thing you can just be in any part from the Pacific to the Andes Mountains 
to the selva. I forgot that past uh, Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> Loved it. It uh, sounds like you had an amazing time. I uh, it's one of those places I want to go, Colombia, um, for sure. I it's, it sounds also like you know a little bit of uh, Spanish as a result of that. Um, by the sounds of it, uh, I guess so. Yeah, like the food is 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 what's one of those things that when you're because obviously you're traveling with Bitcoin, that there's a lot more to it. Like you're obviously traveling and relying on, as you said, different families and people and like the kindness of, of people in, in every country. Uh, and, I'm, and it sounds like you met kind, decent people in every single country, which is not a shock because FYI, for anyone who hasn't traveled much, there's lovely people everywhere around the world. Uh, what, um, what are the things that when you've traveled, you focused on? Like, were you someone who's been to different tourist spots or are you more somebody who focuses on like the food and the culture and the people? Like, what's your favorite things about traveling and like being on the go all the time? Oh, my favorite thing about this traveling is definitely couch surfing is because I get to stay with local people. And that really gives me an insight into how the local people live. And with, along with that, I get to explore the unhidden, like hidden places. And if I and definitely go down to tourist places. So let's say if I'm in a new city, I would be there for almost three to four days and a couple of days spent with my couch surfer and, and then explore the place. Definitely, <clears throat> I just go down there because it's run every city. So from there, I just end up from, even if it's a small village or even if it's an island, I'll just show up. Because you do not know what's going to happen. I guess the fear of unknown really gets me going. It's a kick that I get out of it. When I'm like, all right, what's going to happen here? You do not know what's going to happen tomorrow. I, and food, obviously, the things come about. So there's something very basic I divide my travels into. is called food, shelter, and transportation. Uh, shelter comes through couch surfing. And as of, hi, I'm so sorry. I lost you guys. I'm back here. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah but, uh, I, do I need to go for it again? Where did I stop? Yeah, no, you're all good. Uh, just for anyone listening, obviously, this is part of traveling is that you often don't have like a, a connection can go in and out. So it's, we're getting the authentic experience. But uh, yeah, you were saying, uh, oh, blimey, that was it. You were talking about um, the like things like the, the shelter you're getting with um, with yeah. like uh, the people from couch surfing and the food and, and, and what you're up yeah. to, I guess, when you go to each country. Yeah, yeah basically, the food is right now, which is a big challenge for me to find pe people uh, or places that accept Bitcoin. And luckily last night in the train, I found a guy who had a trust wallet and I was like, wow, he has a trust wallet so I can get myself dinner on the train. It was a 35 hour train journey. And in fact, today I'm in a restaurant that accepts crypto in Delhi. Uh, and it was a big, huge Thali V8. And I'm really grateful. So that's the biggest challenge, but I guess BitRefill is pretty much solving a lot of my hurdles and really thankful to that. <laughs> No, that's awesome because I was going to say like it's is food is food pretty much the biggest challenge because I guess travel you, you've got bit refill potentially to help with that and I suppose you can always like hitch lifts maybe with people who might accept Bitcoin but is food is like the number one or is there anything else that's kind of been more of a real pain than than food? Yeah, there Sorry. there are there are sometimes some places that I want to visit to like in Dubai. Luckily, I got a friend who had a Bitcoin wallet and we just bumped into each other and then I got to visit the Ferrari World Abu Dhabi or for that matter. I could go down to the Dubai Expo 2020, which is a big thing because a friend, I got, I got them converted. I got them open a blue wallet. I'm like, here's a blue wallet. Here are my expenses. Take my sats because it's a big challenge. People are still very skeptical. And in India, people are really scared about it. They are just like, it is really bad. And I do not know how it's going to be in the future. I literally do not know how, how my journey is going to go down in Thailand, Indonesia, Fiji, Vanuatu. Let's just see. I'm just going to go. I believe in the universe. I believe things are going to go bien, bien, really good. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, dude. Like uh, the times I've traveled around kind of without a plan, it's generally worked out for me all right when uh, you just believe that things will work out if you have a good uh, natured reason. Do you ever like um, reach out? So if you're going to somewhere, say for example, you're going to Vanuatu, like do you ever reach out to people or like look online and try and find Bitcoin communities or meetups in the area and like people who might be able to help you? Or, or do you just literally go blind and hope for the best? Uh, as of now, till now, I was using the couch surfing community very, very big. And and now I started using Twitter to get reach out to the Bitcoin community. And as of now, the Twitter has been coming out very, very helpful. People are loving the journey and people are really supporting me. Uh, I really feel the energy because some way or the another universe is blessing this journey. And I feel Twitter is the way forward. And that's how I think so I'll start getting reach out to the community. And some way or the another thing will work out. Like no plan, but Twitter is the way forward. So thank you, Jack Dorsey. Boop, boop. 
Uh, Paco, have you encountered uh, many people that accept Lightning or is it mostly just on-chain Bitcoin that you've been spending? They, they have law, most of them are on-chain because there are a lot of exchanges in India. As I speak to you, there are about, let's say, 5 million users uh, on, Bitcoin, on cryptocurrency in India. And most of them are on exchanges. So that's one. Or if not, and if they really get comfortable with me or with my friends, I open them a Bitcoin on the wallet. That's the blue wallet for that matter or a wallet of Satoshi. And lightning is catching on. I was really surprised. I was in Chennai. It's a, it's a beach city. It's a metropolitan. And there was this milk parlor selling milk, but he had a wallet already when I was there. And I was like, how do you have it? He's like, my friend has been telling me for years since 2013, he's been telling me. And I'm like, all right, let's do the first transaction. I was really proud. I was really honored. I was really blessed to just do that transaction. So yeah, lightning is picking up here because lightning, I'm right now as I'm sitting with Mridul here, he, Mridul just did some $10 head gift vouchers to everybody who showed up for the Bitcoin meetup. And uh, the as you say on lightning, you can use it on Bitrefill right away. It just gives you an exit option because many people who do not want to hold, they want to do an exit. So yeah, lightning is catching up. Let's get Midril to tell us about the meetup. Yeah, Mridul is just... Mridul, come here. He's just right now. He's here. Just a minute. All right, bro. He's here. Hey, Ricardo. Hey, Mridul. Uh, you guys just had a meetup? Paco was saying yeah, you just, just had, had a meetup. Meet Awesome. How did it go? It was amazing, buddy. As you can see, we're having fun. <laughs> That's nice, man. How many how many people did you get to show up, roughly? About 11? Um, 12? Around, yeah, around 11, 12. 11, 12. But really good ones. Like, they were really into it. <laughs> yeah, we had all the Bitcoin OG. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty cool, man. Like, uh, I can imagine, is it the case that like some people are a little bit like scared to like come out publicly about it because of all the like laws and rules and they don't want to get associated? Is, is there a little bit of that? Uh, you know, we were all wearing Bitcoin badges and then some people um, who were there as well, they just saw it. They, they came up to us, they're like, hey, are you guys into Bitcoin? And then, yeah, they joined us. <laughs> that's fun. Uh, that's awesome, like, man. Like, like there's something crazy. There's one guy who's in Bitcoin since 2010. And the first Bitcoins he got himself in India was through a paper wallet from USA. And that's what amazing. Like he got his yeah. first 9.2 Bitcoin on paper wallet. So <laughs> he flew it up all the way from the US to India. <laughs> Damn, that's, uh, that's really cool. That's awesome, yeah. man. Like I love to hear stories like that. And hey, for anyone listening yeah. out, like if you're in, there's lots of, in America, the in England, uh, India, like we Bit Refill hosts meetups in lots of places. So always check out our Twitter for information um, about that, by the way. Um, but that's really cool. Uh, well, it's good to see you guys hanging out. And um, well, this your, this meeting wouldn't have happened without Bitcoin, would it? I suppose so. Uh, it's something to be uh, to be very grateful for. Um, but yeah, when it comes to like uh, what you guys are up to, like I guess Paco, because you guys are in Delhi at the moment. Um, what's like? Uh, what's your what's your plan, Paco, for like the next uh, the next sort of steps in your journey? Like where you, where are you going next? I am going to wrap up India in the next two weeks because I need to hit out international. I'm just going to make up the Indian Bitcoin journey as a whole. So there'll be about 16 cities I would have covered in India just by using Bitcoin. And after that, I'll head up to Thailand, then to Vietnam, Cambodia, Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, Fiji, and so on. So forth onto, onto the Pacific Islands and try to find a sailboat from there and sail all the way into the Galapagos in Ecuador and then just see how life goes. <laughs> Man. Uh, <I'm> join <laughs> yeah, it's the same. Dude, I want to join that. I want to join that. If you, if, you can find, if you can find a way to sail there uh, with Bitcoin or even just on the love of someone, then like that would be amazing. Yes. I, 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 I'm, I'm just like, talking to the universe. Huh? What he says? Yeah, do, do please film it so that we can all watch. Film your experience. Yes. Right? Hello, Jerry. Hey, Jerry. Hi. Hi. Namaste, Jerry. What's up? <laughs> yeah, he's saying so, make sure to video it. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask, you You mentioned that you read the, the Bitcoin standard by Saifuddin. So what was it precisely that got you attracted to Bitcoin when you read the book? What was it that you know resonated with you as a person? Okay. As a person, we are just creating, we all want quick money and everybody just wants quick. And there was this one beautiful line that really I still say it in every meeting. It's like you had Michelangelo hanging up a ceiling wall for four, four years 
creating something valuable. And now you have Miley Cyrus twerking her ass for hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> 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 well yeah man that's 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 something that just really got me going and i was like wait a minute what is sound money and then you were taught in the school uh, like excuse me there's something called the gold standard the government shows gold standard and everything and then you come to it 1971 that's been stopped and like they're teaching us a lie and i was just like okay this is not cool and then you see it it's like a puppet dance. You know, what's happening is a puppet dance. After a while, your hands start painting. Half an hour, one hour, one and a half hour. And then you understand it's all a puppet dance. Until when will this puppet dance go on? So I was just like, this is crazy. We need to understand what's time preference. We need to start creating value. And every great invention happened in the 18th and the 19th century. Be it the electricity, or be it your aeroplane or your cars, or your commode that you use in the toilet. All we have created in our century is yoga pants. So come on, guys. <laughs> so yeah, there were a lot of things like I could really feel it. And coming from India, my country had stopped five hundred and thousand rupees currency, and then they brought out a new two thousand rupees note. Come on, like what's this happening? Come on, guys. It was really hit hard for us. Yeah. I like how it's uh, <laughs> Miley Cyrus and uh, <laughs> that made you uh, made you realize that's pretty that's pretty funny actually. What's been the most Bitcoin friendly place that you've traveled to? Like, where's the best place to be traveling on Bitcoin? Uh, I wouldn't say Dubai. I would just say Dubai is a crypto friendly place because you can. There are a lot of OTCs. And in India, if you ask me, uh, Mumbai and Pune were really receptive for it. But as I move forward, I think so in every city that I've gone, I'll tell you, I've opened 50 new blue wallets by now. So I guess it's just been happening. And in India, things are catching on. People are really scared. But in, uh, because in India, it's, I still cannot make a judgment on the other countries. But Dubai is really one place that is crypto friendly. I'll just tell you about Da Vinci. This is pretty good. You know Da Vinci, right? The guy who got it at $1, one Bitcoin. So this guy, about a month ago, he walks over to the BMW showroom with almost hundred thousand dollars in cash in cash and he puts it on the bmw showroom he puts it on the table and he's like i want a bmw and the guy gives him a bmw and this you can't do it in india and this i pretty much i do not know where else can you do it but that's the freedom of crypto in dubai and if you see all the top influencers be it your crypto mm or tone ways or jack or anyone everybody's just shifted down to dubai for that matter because they're really friendly. And I guess Singapore also goes into the same stance. And I guess El Salvador, everyone's moving off to adopting Bitcoin. So definitely these are the places. El Salvador, El Pulgarcito de Latino America. <laughs> yeah, it definitely feels like the Americas are, are getting more kind of like ahead in the idea of uh, being crypto friendly. I mean, it depends how you view the El Salvadorian law, doesn't it? But yeah, it seems to be a bit more ahead of on, on that. Yeah. Uh, and, and we'll find out soon. In fact, as we've as we've been speaking, Bitcoin's popped off to an all-time new all new all-time high. Um, I saw just before we came on the podcast. Uh, for anyone who's listening, we're recording around the time that it's come out. The US's inflation is actually around six point two percent, not like four point one or whatever they said it was. Um, and so, in the reaction to that, uh, Bitcoin's just popped off to it to a new all-time high. Um, so that's pretty exciting news. I guess like um, when you're because obviously you're 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 living your life in this exciting way. And you're you're living your life on Bitcoin only at the moment. What is your primary goal for you when you're like traveling now? Uh, what what do you say that is? What is your kind of your what do you say is your calling and like why is it that you're traveling? What is it that you want to achieve uh, when you're doing this? Uh, one of the major reasons why I'm doing this is to show that humans are really kind. The Bitcoin maximalists that they call toxic aren't toxic. I have been hanging around with a lot of Bitcoin maximalists over the past three four weeks. And everybody has a good heart. And one thing is happening with that good heart is adoption coming around. Because they then themselves take me to their friend's shops, open them a wallet and let them do transaction. And these maximalists, if there weren't any of this maximalist, Bitcoin wouldn't be where it is today. And this is what I'm showing through my vlogs that people are kind. And yes, it keeps me going. Adoption on the way is happening along with showing humans of Bitcoin are kind. It really keeps me going. It really fills me up to just see these people aren't that toxic and that evil just because the world says so. 
every human is just like a side of coin and if you it depends what side you are seeing or what how good are you to the other person and i am not kidding this maximalists i love them i just love them i do not know many would say that i don't know but i love them <laughs> I, I get that. And I think from my personal perspective, I've met with a lot of maximalists. Uh, so like when I, when, I, when I read their stuff on Twitter, I think, oh, this guy's going to be really like mean, and not very nice or whatever. And then you meet them in person and it's like a whole nother experience. And they're like super lovely people. and You get on really well and they're like funny and et cetera. And I think I think a part of it is just that <clears throat> it's hard, first off, to convey your actual personality online. Right. And then additionally, there's an element of people just being scared that people who are new to the space are going to um see the wrong information and so part of it is like just being blunt and honest about what is and isn't correct in, in your own view as a maximalist and then thirdly i think people get sick of the crap as well i mean i i get sick of the constant spam and shelling of random tokens that no one cares about uh, all over my twitter um I, have you been to how many bitcoin meetups have you been to or crypto meetups i guess because they're, well, they're different things but how many crypto or bitcoin meetups have you been to paco i have myself held 14 meetups by till now this is the 13th 14th one i myself i'm holding a meetup in every city and while i was in dubai i attended the binance cz was there and i attended the future blockchain summit and yeah i attended a couple of them there not much yeah but i i really like i really like the fact about i can share this with everyone cz was there in dubai and a question was asked to him like, do you own, own any NFTs? So his response was, I don't own any NFT. I do not know what's an NFT. I do not know how it works. I merely provide a platform to trade. And I was like, wow, what a guy. He just is just taking the world around and he doesn't know anything. Pretty weird that was. So that was the only finance meetup that I went over to, but nothing much after that, yeah. Yeah, I think if I'm a CC, he's very focused, right? So like his goal is, he likes Bitcoin. He understands Bitcoin. He obviously likes BNB because of his own interests. Uh, but yeah. other than that, like he's pretty, from what I understand, he's pretty focused on, I want to build yeah. and make Binance. But he, he seems to believe a lot in the the Binance vision. Like he seems to very much have drank the Binance Kool-Aid in a good way, I guess. Uh, and he yeah. seems to believe a lot in their ambition. So I think he probably doesn't, yeah, doesn't have the time to care about NFTs maybe. Do you think? <laughs> yeah, um, I can do Probably not. But like what? Because obviously you've been to the Binance meetups. Is there any differences you can see between Bitcoin and crypto meetups, like with the type of people or the, or the things that are spoken about? Yes, 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 yes. Crypto is all money, blings, fancy life. I remember this. There were a couple of exchanges that were hosting some influencers, and it was all blingy, Armani's, Gucci's, fancy champagne nights. Fancy Rolls Royce cars, everything is just huge, big, in your face, in your eyes. And Bitcoin on the other side is on the side, the developers who are just doing, who are just creating. And they're just there, just having a conversation. So there's a huge difference between them. There is a big, huge difference. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can vouch for that myself. I think like being to crypto meetups and then being to Bitcoin meetups. And this is why I chose, even though I'm someone who's a Bitcoin first kind of guy, I still have some, some old coins and some shit coins too. Um, Got to love it. But um, going to, I, I, ho I host a Bitcoin meetup because I found that, yeah, with the Bitcoin, it's more about what it's, it's more about the ideology to me and like what people can do with it and building with it. And when it's, when you go to these crypto meetups, it's usually just people shilling stuff to each other or trying to sound good about a trade they made, but they made loads of money. And, and that, that's, that's fine. Like the first time when you're really new and you're like, oh, wow, okay, there's these cool things. But then after like one of these things, or once you've been involved for a year or so, it just gets extremely boring and tedious and fake as well, I think is another thing. It was very fake. Yeah. Like, like, like I can, I can say something like, let's say all these influencers are there and all of their followers, let's say millions of these followers are just watching that this person is just having a bling life. So the person on the other hand just thinks like, oh my God, crypto, you can just make money and live life like a uh, Khalifa, a king. <laughs> but that ain't the case, right? That ain't the case always. Like there is the other side, the yin, the yang, the hot, the cold, the black, the white. So it's there. <laughs> this, uh, that's, that's cool. I, I, there's, there's, there's different ways. I was just thinking, because there's different ways. I think of the ways that I've spent Bitcoin, right? And like, I think one would be having a friend buy something and then I'll pay him back in Bitcoin. And I've done that back and forth. And for example, the latest bit refill meetup uh, extravaganza, you know, I, someone would get dinner and then we'd just pay him back in lightning. And it was really easy and quick, actually. 
uh, and some lucky person gets to exchange their their fiat for for Bitcoin, uh, whoever takes on the bill. So that's kind of cool. And there's obviously the thing where like you can pay Bitcoin directly to shop owners, and you can obviously use Bit Refill as well. Are there any like different ways or surprising ways that you've uh, experienced or things you've done where you've been able to spend Bitcoin to 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 live? Like, is there anything that I'm not thinking of here? Like getting a friend to do it for you and paying them back, paying a shop or something for Bitcoin. And then using bit refill. Are there any other ways you found to spend Bitcoin or to, to get things to happen when you need it? I I I have started giving paper wallets. So I have a bunch of paper wallets that I'm giving people, and I give the uh, paper wallets to some auto rickshaws, the tuk-tuk drivers, or to some person who doesn't have any knowledge about what Bitcoin will be in three years or five years. In fact, the waiters at my hotel, I just give them paper wallets, load it up, and I say to them, open it up in five years. And that's when you just take care of it. So that's one that I've been using and I have been just been, yeah, that's the only other way that I found till now because many people are having wallets. I was really surprised to know that people have so many wallets and people are receptive to exchange their services and goods for Bitcoin. So Bitcoin definitely is an asset class. That's a proven thing. I'm really hoping that the IMF approves it, approves it as a currency. So that every country is free from Bitcoin being taxed as an asset. You and me both, man. <laughs> you and me both. That make a lot of our lives easier. Um, wow. Especially yeah. in getting like paid in Bitcoin as well. I guess. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I think you're right. Like uh, one thing I came across, uh, even in London, there's like people I've spoken to who I know. One's a taxi driver, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I, I, you know, I've known him for a few years. Oh yeah, I accept Bitcoin in my cab." And I'm like, "What? Like, <laughs> how do I never know about this kind of thing?" And it's just a lot more people are open to it than you would ever think is, is the, the perspective that I've got. Um, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely think that's the case. And I guess like my, my last sort of real question I've got that I can, I can think of right this second is, who's the, who are some of the coolest people that you've met with this, on this journey? Like it doesn't have to necessarily be Bitcoin. It's just, is there any kind of cool stories or, or people you've come across who have helped you out or you've, you've met? Ah, lovely man. There was a Simona. She is from Italy. And she was one, she is a Bitcoiner maxi, but she was really kind and she got me connected to a lot of Bitcoiners. I got to meet the founder of Mempool, which was just a blessing right there. I got to meet so many Bitcoiners who do not like their photos to be taken. So some really good people I met this way. One of the greatest for me was this person in Rajkot. It's in a, a city in India. He doesn't speak and he can't hear. All right. So he's dumb and deaf, right? But he went to college and he learned uh, English because English is freedom. And he's a Bitcoiner, of course, Bitcoin is freedom. So we both were just chatting to each other on Telegram while he came to meet me. The whole day we spent together from the breakfast to the evening meetup. And this is how our day just went by. And that was one place where I felt like I am doing a real, I am merely a connector. I'm connecting people along the way. And as I say to you, I would have connected about three, 400 people around India. And I've just shared what Bitcoin is all about. And I'm getting to meet such people like, like it just brings a smile to my face and I really feel grateful and thankful. Like gratitude is something that's just coming out. And so thanks to Satoshi Nakamoto for not being there with us because humans are such, you know what they would do to a human who owns 1 million Bitcoins. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, man. And I think that's definitely something that I've found the more I go to countries, the more I go to countries without a massive plan either, like I'll just book a one-way ticket and then the day before I'll book some accommodation or find somewhere to stay with a friend. The more I do that and the more you kind of put yourself out there and make yourself vulnerable to other humans, the more grateful I get of the world in general and of people in general. And the more I learn to trust that things will just, okay, yeah, bad things happen, good things happen, but it will work out. Um, so it sounds like the, the more you travel, the more grateful you seem to get about, um, about these things, about Bitcoin and about people. Uh, Paco, ha have you or do you have plans to travel to Rovereto, Italy, to the Bitcoin Valley or to Bitcoin Beach in El Zante in El Salvador? All right. So, uh, I, okay, everyone's listening to me. This is like a big, huge shout out to everyone who can help me here. I wanted to go down to El Salvador. It is a visa on arrival for Indians. But I have to travel through Europe, that's like a Europe or to USA. And I do not have any of those visas. I tried to apply for the uh, airport transit visa, but the next available dates were just after the 18th. So definitely missed El Salvador. And I do not know when it's in Italy. 
if you can definitely help me out with the visa just like an invitation some sort i would definitely love to come and meet you all and hug you all like such as such as life but it's okay agradecer la vida siempre I uh, yeah I I guess so. Do you think you end up in going to El Salvador when you somehow sail from uh, from Asia over to South America? Do you think that would be the time? Wow, that'd be magical. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like it'd be a real good time. Jerry, I, uh, I, I, I don't, Jerry, are you, are you there? I didn't want to like hog. Is there anything you want to ask? Um, no, I'm just enjoying the convo. You know, um, Paco is 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 Paco is enchanting me. He has a very you know catchy you know spirit and uh, i'm catching the vibes <laughs> no, it's good vibes yeah it's definitely i think you've got the most positive uh, spirit that's come through on a podcast that i've come across in quite a long time man so it's a good uh, it's a testament to who you are as a person that's for sure oh uh, well since um i want to ask um idea other things inside of you know crypto that you know interests you you mentioned that you know you have the business with nfts and you not care but i do things in the in the space at large that you you know might you know pique your interest and you think you might might think you might want to explore in the future or probably invest in who knows <laughs> i got i got offered to make nfts for my running shoes as of now and i just said no to them and uh, i got offered to do some tweets to shill some coins to the amount of two thousand dollars per tweet and i said no and i am really curious about what's happening with solana Solano, <laughs> uh, because that's like a go at Ethereum, and uh, yeah, that's something that I'm really curious about to know, and very, really, really, really learning more about DAOs, decentralized autonomous organization, to see what just happening onto that end. So as of now, I'm really on because I have just started my journey, and every day I'm learning more. Thanks to Andreas Antonopoulos, I'm learning every day something new. So I'm just seeing how this journey goes far, and I do not know what happens after a year. Let's catch. Let's pick this up in the bear run. <laughs> uh, speaking of DAOs, have you used Bisc at all to to buy or sell Bitcoin uh, during uh, your travels? Bisc is a decentralized Bitcoin exchange that uh, has a DAO. It's like run okay. by volunteers through a DAO. Have you ever heard of it? Nope, nope, nope. That's first time. I'll just check it out after this. Bisc. Okay. B-I-S-C. Perfect. All right. I'll check that out. I, I have a question for all of you all. I just want everybody's answer to this. This is something that's been really crazy. Uh, what happens if Satoshi? Let's say it's it's a it's just conversational. I meet Satoshi Nakamoto, and uh, he moves some sats from his wallet. <laughs> I'm What's gonna happen? I'm <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> Jerry's like, don't. <laughs> I, it, it, a, it obviously means it means one of two things to me, right? Like step it either means it means either a Satoshi is you know well and has all of his you know uh, private keys and access to all of his Bitcoin and that he wants to sell or move it for whatever reason, uh, or b it means that a hackers managed to somehow get hold of his Bitcoin, right? That's the two possibilities from that. Um, now, obviously, we'd all see, wouldn't we? I think that like it's interesting because I think people people fight, think of the uh, Satoshi having his Bitcoin as like a vulnerability, uh, but there's part of me that's like, well, actually, we don't. Like, it's kind of good in a way because it's kind of like a reminder. For example, say if the Bitcoin devs decided to do something absolutely ridiculous and like you know make it some centralized nightmare, somehow you know Bitcoin became this kind of like Bcash 2.0 piece of crap <laughs> enterprise uh, thing. Uh, then like there's, there's, there's that thing that like Satoshi could actually, if he, if he's alive, if he has all this stuff could just go, I don't agree with this boom and like dump a million and obviously kind of destroy the project when, if it gets, there's kind of that element, which is kind of cool. I mean, I know it makes it less community based, but like if someone ever tried to kind of take over, I feel like that could happen, which could be kind of cool. So I kind of like that. That's a possibility to be honest, but yeah, I'd be selling as well. <laughs> I really think that Satoshi rel relinquished all power the moment, you know, he has been, he went absent you know, all this time, even if he comes back today, um, I don't think he'd have uh, that much influence about the project. I think we saw that during the Sego 2 X, you know, issue. And people like, even if Satoshi comes back and he was pro, um, um, for uh, was pro hard fork, you know, I think the community would have still wanted to stick with the one MB um, limit at the time. So I think it's pretty irrelevant. But you know, I'd be saying, I'd be like, because he has the power to move the market, you know south and i'm like ah, oh, i might just head out you know i'm not sticking around for you know massive you know dump but i um yeah but the thing is he wouldn't have much influence over the project aside from you know 
possibly moving to, to I think if he was to show up to the depression, it would probably skyrocket. But he'd probably be kidnapped, kidnapped also. So yes, there's, there's that. <laughs> Ricardo, what about you? I don't think Satoshi is ever going to move those coins. Um, if if he walked away um, when Gavin went to the CIA, I imagine that the best place to hide would be in plain sight. And he's probably a public figure in Bitcoin. Um, he's probably still in Bitcoin development. Uh, that would be my guess. Ooh, I see, Parcel. I see. <laughs> we're Loved all, it. We're all speculating uh, investigators at the moment now. Uh, but yeah, it seems. I, I, I think I, I would sell uh, knowing what's going to happen, right? And then I would, once it hits a price point, like, I don't know, if it goes down, if it went down to like anything below 10,000, I'd probably just buy up a load because it's going to survive no matter what anyway. But I know there would be a huge fallout from it. So I'd be like, okay, I'm just getting out. And I'm going to wait for it to just, because it would obviously, to, um, let's be realistic here. It's not, it's going to tank at least. Like if it tanks 45% on some crappy bull crap China news, then it's probably going to tank <laughs> a, a little bit harder or the same on, on somewhat legitimate news. So um, yeah. yeah. And then I'd just buy up when it got down. I think that's probably what I'd do. Lovely. Uh, yeah. Nice. That's nice, an uh, interesting question, man. Uh, definitely for sure. What would you do, man? What would you do? I am just, I am the guy who will be making, I'll be receiving some contributions from him. For my trip, so I'll continue traveling. <laughs> I like it. Hold fast, hold steady. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Just believe. Have faith in faith. So yeah, let's just go. That's a good attitude. I had another question. Like, what what is the attitude been uh, towards people that you come across during your journey? It's like when you tell them, "Hey, I'm traveling just on Bitcoin." Like, how how do they react? They're like, "Huh? What?" You can do that. How do you book your flight tickets? And I'm like, bit refill. <laughs> then they're like, how do you book your hotels? I'm like, bit refill. And then they're like, how do you move around? I'm like, bit refill. And then they look at me and they're like, what is bit refill? And I'm like, it's just an application where you can spend your Bitcoin. He's like, oh, you got into Bitcoin way early. You have a lot of Bitcoins. And depending on the people, I just bluff. Someone I say I have 17. To some I say I have 20. To some I say I have 0 0.1. Honestly, I don't even have a one whole Bitcoin. So people are just like really shocked and really amazed and they really want to know more and they really like invite me further and suddenly their heart is just like open. So people are really receptive to it and they look at you like I'm a rich boy who is loaded and but generally I'm loaded with a lot of smiles and my heart is full. So yeah, I really thank that. <laughs> uh, are you concerned about the five dollar wrench attack in any way i mean walking around these places that you've never been with a bitcoin logo on your shirt and stuff like that telling people you're oh. traveling with bitcoin yeah there are a couple of places i was called an anti-national and they said how can you say such thing about a country that has given you the land the food given you the education how how dare you say such things we don't care if the dollar hits skyrocket if our currency drops down you're not about to share you're not allowed to share such things and you keep hearing such news is uh, about, okay, not so good news is about people just getting picked up. So I'm just like fingers crossed always. And I really like Padre Nuestro que está en el cielo. <laughs> I'm always like, uh, God, just take care of me. I'm like, Satoshi, just take care of me. I'm just on this journey because I feel more, uh, now is the time for adoption. I guess Satoshi himself would be spreading around some Bitcoins. Because it's time to just spread it around. It's like, may the tables be longer and the walls be shorter so that we all can eat together. Man, that sounds, uh, it sounds pretty, uh, pretty honorable. And I think, yeah, you're, you're right. You've got to be honest to people. And like, you never tell people what you have in, in reality. But like, uh, you know, if people think you haven't got too much, then you, you should be okay, right? Like, well, I, I know what you mean. I was walking around with a, because it was raining and, and I was in Portugal and I had a Bitcoin hat on. I was thinking, oh, maybe I wouldn't do this in some places because I don't want to get, you know, wrench attacked for my... Uh, to my measlies but um yeah it's something that you always gotta always gotta think about a little bit yeah i had one last question what is the current um attitude from the indian government towards bitcoin like every, it seems like every other month they say they're gonna ban it and then legalize it and then ban it and then legalize it like where are they at right now all right so let's move forward from 2015 18 21 uh they're gonna take a middle stance towards it they're gonna consider it as an asset class so they will be coming forward with taxation on it and they will want a KYC for everyone. They're going to make a centralized wallet. So that means your keys, you do not hold your keys. That's about it. That's the way forward. This is what has come across till now. Nowhere close to payment. If this is considered as payment, they will just banish it out because then you can't control. 
and but i'll be honest to you there are various various non custodial wallets that are being used for all their transactions there are there is a huge otc counters in india guys i'm not kidding to you okay i shouldn't be saying all this but there are some huge players in the market there are huge huge players who can who have the capability of moving how many ever bitcoins you say so that's crazy there is huge are, demand are, are most people in india trading on peer to peer like through telegram groups and stuff like that or are they trading on on exchanges on exchanges that's why when i say there are like about 3 to about they say 5 million they claim it's let's say 3 million let's say if there are 3 million users uh, all are on exchanges let's say from that 10% or 5% would be because not many people know not your keys not your coin so yeah not many people so more are most are exchanges so most are with kyc finance is leading here coin switch kuber coin dcx yeah and is bitcoin more popular or uh in india or or most people into also crypto i'll tell you what's what, what's rocking everybody's boat is shibu inu <laughs> dude they're just going nuts at it before it was hello so every indian so there's a very good saying every indian knows an average 500 english words and that 500 english words now there is dodge and elon musk and shibu i guess <laughs> I love that you got Doge, Elon Musk, and Shiba Inu like uh, in everyone's vocabulary. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my god, I find it funny that like things like that uh, spread around the world. Kind of, I kind of not enjoy that like these stupid things like spread around the world and some people make money. It's sad when people don't when people lose money though. But um, yeah, I, I kind of I still find it funny that these things are like in everyone's vernacular. Um, like, like I would I would just add something here after my every meetup. when it's strictly bitcoin meetup everybody comes and asks me sir sir please tell me one coin you are bullish on please tell me that one coin there where i can make my money and i'm like bloody hell look at my t-shirt it says bitcoin i am talking bitcoin everything is bitcoin then why like no sir one other coin sir and i'm like brother do your own research then go for it i'm not a trader <laughs> just make one up Well, it's pretty it's pretty hard to make one up at this point. You could say anything. You could probably say poo coin and it's probably a coin. So I would I I, I guarantee it's a coin. So uh, I saw I saw one the other day was it someone was showing one that was just the letter H nine times. That was a coin. I said there's just crap everywhere. Um well Jerry just left us but he just he, before the meeting or before we started recording he was talking about how he just released a coin. Oh he did. Yeah, he's uh, he's 7x in right now. Is he really? Uh, yeah. That's why he left. Hell? He's got he's got to go run it. His... <laughs> I need to find out about this. I I need to get myself on this. You know, tell me tell me to tell me to about this. <laughs> going to find this amazing coin. We got to ask Jerry for the details. Uh, he said yeah. that him and his friends just released a coin like I don't, I don't know if he did it yesterday or the day before but I'm like it's already this. 7x and he's loving life right now. Oh, hell yeah. Well, good for him, I guess. I uh Yeah, they guy I have no idea um I've I've never made my own coin or project but I saw this a lot of guys uh, a lot of these Solana projects that there's a lot of these Solana on like Solana dexes like Ugi and Sol Doge and Sol Cam and all these ridiculous things that have made like money or some get rug pulled and yeah there's a lot of these terrible tokens out there <laughs> yeah um, this for the next podcast uh, Jerry, Jerry will, uh, Jerry's okay. rejoining so we'll we'll ask him right now as i say for the next podcast he's going to come in in like a fur coat and like with gold bullion behind him Jerry uh, tell us about your coin yeah Jerry we need to know all about your project <laughs> hopefully you can hear yeah i can hear you um what was that yeah tell us about your uh, fantastic we want to know about project, your coin Jerry. that you launched oh yeah. i was oh man Oh okay Wakanda Inu it's an African uh, community project that we started and um no I didn't start it you know some people invited me I like okay I'm here to help you know to offer my advice and um yeah it's basically you know af- um named after the fictitious um, Wakanda um country and embodiment of the African spirit and uh african oneness yeah and the good thing which i'm happy about because the coin is coin is up on 7x going to 8 and you know don't blame me i'm poor so i'm just you know taking advantage of <laughs> of the game <laughs> but yeah um it's been doing pretty great on the market it's on pancake swap and a couple of local exchanges and they are hoping they can you know 
get it, you know, up to uh, Binance eventually. It has over, I think, trillions and trillions of supply. So it's kind of giving me a, the XRP to 589 vibes. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Well, we won't What's say we won't say Wakanda Inu. Oh, Wakanda Wakanda Inu, Inu? yeah, Wakanda Inu, yeah. Yeah, Wakanda Inu. We we won't say any more because we're not, you know, let's just say this has no affiliation with the podcast or Bit Refill. No, no, we just say this is just uh, and there's no recommendation to purchase this token. Actually, do not buy. Uh, you probably get burned. Bit, but, Bitcoin. You, know, you could probably Bitcoin. do like the Shiba Inu and you could get lucky. No, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Bitcoin only, Bitcoin only. <laughs> All right, I, like, I, I guess uh, on that note, now it's a pretty good time to wrap up anyway. Um, it's been nearing uh, an hour-ish. So, uh, yeah, everyone who's out there listening, we love you. We appreciate you tuning in. And uh, we apologize for talking about Wakanda Inu on the podcast. And, um, <laughs> and Paco, appreciate you coming to join us and let Riddle know uh, that we're thankful that he was able to join as well for a short period. And, uh, yeah, thanks, Ricardo and Jerry, for joining me as well. And uh, I hope that your travels go on very well, Paco. And if you want to follow Paco, um, then you just have to type in uh, Paco de la India or run with Bitcoin on Twitter and you will find him. Uh, he is uh, sponsored uh, by BitRefill at the moment too. So we'll be reposting some of his content. And yeah, yeah. feel free to, to check him out and help him out on his journey and get in touch. Uh, yeah, any last words, Paco? I love you all. And please keep sharing your blessings. And if you have any few chats. <laughs> i like it i like it okay well thanks everyone for tuning in thanks again paco and uh, we will see you all soon on the next podcast okay.